Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining in to the Mastering Shiny Book Club today. Oh, let me share my screen real quick. Okay, so today we're going to cover chapter eight, user feedback. Basically, what this chapter is about is the things that we want to uh, tell the tell the customer, the user directly. Uh, there are some options that we are with, that we have here. Uh, the validation. This this one is like an option to replace instead of just letting the program display an error or something like that, something that it may confuse the user. So if it's in our hands, we can use validation and we can you and we can express to the user the errors or the messages that we want to show in a clear way. The notifications, they are just basically some way of sending general messages to the user. Anything that we want to say or that we want to uh, communicate to the user that we are doing, we can use the notifications. The progress bars, they are more straight. They are just about informing the user about the progress of some operation that we are doing. And the confirmation or undo, they are just ways of giving the user a choice of maybe asking them if they want to do something, they wanted to continue with this action, uh, or if the action is already done, we can give them the chance to undo it. This is when we are performing some dangerous operations, as, uh, such as maybe deleting some data or something like that. One second here. Are you seeing my screen right now? No. No, no. Oh, okay. One second here. I don't know what happened. Okay, can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Yes, too. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So we're going to start with the validation. Basically, uh, the first one is that we want to validate an input. So as we know, we have a lot of inputs on our applications. And sometimes we want to have an exact type of input or our application might not work, might have an error, something like that. So we want to make sure that we are getting the right input. In here, in to start adding this, in the UI, we're going to use this library, use Shiny Feedback, in order to give all these feedbacks to the user. That's the library that we're going to use. In here, what we do, well, we call the library. We have an input, a numeric input. We're going to have the ID of n, and we're going to set the starting value to 10, and we're going to have an output that is half. So basically, that's what we need to put on the UI. Uh, nothing new up until now, and uh, just the shiny feedback library that we were going to need. Let's see here an example, and I think. I need to, where was the global options? Appearance, edit a font. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so let's do it here. We're gonna create the UI. As I mentioned before, we have a numeric input and a text output. And in the server, we're going to create 
uh, reactive function called half. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna we're gonna uh, evaluate if the input that we are receiving is even, is an even number. Now we're gonna use the shiny feedback library that we just that we just specified here. And we're gonna create a warning. This is one of the options that we can uh, select as a feedback, the warning. And what this is gonna have, this uh, feedback have three important parts. The first one is the ID, the input ID. So this is the ID of the input here. We have it that the input is N. Uh, here we have a logical uh, like calculation that based on that, it's going to show the warning or it is, not, it is not going to show the warning. So in this case, it is going to evaluate even, even if it's a logical value, true if it's even number and false if it's not. And if it's not even, it will show, it will show this option that this is the last part of a feedback, the text part that this is gonna show. Uh, if we have that, let's see what happens here. Let's see how does the app look. Okay, perfect. So here we have the input that we want. A 10, we can change it. But what happens if we put a 7, a 5? It, it tells us, it shows the warning here. Please select an even number. That's the text that we specified. So it shows the warning, but it still calculate the half of it. So in that case, we are telling the user that there is a warning that this is not an even number, but the application still calculates the half. Uh, some other options that we can have as a feedback, there are the feedback danger and the feedback success. Now, uh, this function of rec, what it does is that it require it requires something in order to continue with the outputs. So in the example that we were seeing before, what if we want to give the warning that it is not an even number and we don't know and we don't want to show the half of it. So that's why we use this rec function. Let's see here. So in this example, we have a select input. The user can select from English or Maori. Uh, we have a text input, ID name, and it is the name of the user. And we have a text output, the greeting. So the greeting will be uh, according to the language that it, they selected. What it's gonna do is that it's gonna input the, it's gonna use the input of the language. So for example, if we select English, it's gonna do hello. It's gonna leave this space here and it's gonna use the name. So let's see how does it look? Oh, this. So let's run it here. This is the same one here is in the slides. First thing that we can notice is that even though we are not writing anything, it is giving us an error. In here, it's because it's trying to calculate, it's trying to show the output, but since we don't have any inputs, we haven't wrote anything or selected anything, there is an error. It cannot, it cannot like fulfill that last output greeting part. So it shows us an error. If we show, if we select here, now it shows us the language, the ki ora for from the Maori. And if we select the name, 
it completes all this part. But if we do not select this one first, it's gonna show us an error. That's why we use the require function, the rec function. So in here, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna select. It is the same, it is the same application, but instead here, we're gonna call that function. And what we're gonna do, and what we're gonna tell the application to do is that if we do not have the input language and the input name, uh, don't do this. Don't try to show the output. Don't try to like calculate this base function and don't show anything. So let's see how does it work. In here, we are only changing the server. So let's see, we have the required function here. And if we run the application, here we can see that we don't have, we haven't select any language input. We haven't select any name input. So the required function, it, it tells the application to stop right there, maybe. Maybe to stop right there, I will say it like that, to not calculate any output uh, until we have the required language and the required input name. In here, we selected the input language, but the require function, it requires language and name. So it's not gonna show anything until we have both. And here we have that. After we have both of them, both of the inputs, it shows us the output, the greeting output. Okay, in this case, let's see here. For the recon validation, sometimes uh, we want to do this require as well as uh, validation. So in case we have here, so when here we want to select, I don't know if you remember this one from the first, from the first meeting. So we have, we select a data, a data set and uh, well, we have the text input, uh, the table output. So we want to show the, a table from the data set. Basically what we're gonna do here in this function is that we're gonna create a reactive one, a reactive function that it only it will only proceed if we have the data set, the input data set. But also it does a validation. The validation is that we're gonna create a logical function as before, and we're gonna uh, evaluate if the input data set exists on the package data sets. If, oh, sorry. Okay, in this case, uh, what we're gonna do is that we create this logical evaluation that we are telling that we are checking if the data set that we wrote here, it does exist in the package data set. So let's see, if it doesn't exist, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a feedback uh, danger type, and it is gonna show a message that says unknown data set. This uh, require exists, this cancel output true, I didn't understand it a lot. I don't know if maybe any of you have any idea on how to explain that part, the cancel output. Because, I'm not sure. oh, sorry? I'm not sure about it yet. Yes, I'm not sure either because it says like it cancels a reactive. It cancels that 
the reactive will reset all downstream output. So maybe it says that it will reset all the outputs that are after that requirement, but I'm not sure what it does. But okay, so basically this application, the first thing is that we require a data set. It's not going to do anything unless we specify the data, the data set input. And after that, it's going to do a validation if the data set exists. So let's see how that looks. We have it here. We have a text input that we're going to ID data set. We have the table output. We have here the require, the first require. It's not gonna do anything until we give them the input of the data set and then the validation. So let's see how that looks. So basically here, uh, the application does not do anything until I give her, I give it this, input. So let's try here. It shows some data. Let's see here. And as you can see, this is what I think the cancel output through uh, helps, helps us with. It like saves the last good input that we have. Not totally sure about that, but I think that's what it does. And here we still write this it says unknown data set this is the feedback danger text that we selected and in here let's give it the right one so if we got a right one it is going to show us well the table output that we specify that we want so that's what that's uh, how we can combine the require function and the validation option. Okay, in this case, what we're gonna do is that we can select a, this function validate message. It will stop the execution of the rest of the code and display a message instead. So in here, what we are going to do with this application is that we're gonna do three transformations, the square, the log, and the square root of a value of a numeric input. We have a numeric input uh, with the ID X and a select input with the ID trends. And we're gonna select a text output, which is gonna uh, show what is text output. So basically what we're gonna do is that once we have the numeric input, it can be anything the user wants, but if the input is less than zero and the input and the transformation is the logarithmic or the square root, we're gonna use this validate function with the message parameter. And we're gonna express that X cannot be negative for this transformation. And everything else uh, above that, well, it's just gonna cancel everything else about that and it will show the message. If it's positive, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna run the switch option. Basically the switch option just uh, chooses any of those ones, any of those three ones, uh, according to the transformation that we selected and it's gonna do the output and it's gonna show us show it in the output out as a text. So let's see how that works here. So in here we have the numeric input, the select input, and the text output that will be our user interface. And we have a server where we have the our logical like our, our logical value where it depends that input x 
if it's zero and if the transformation is log or a square root, it will show that validate message. So let's see how it looks here. Okay, so in this case, let's see if it works with a positive number. We can have the square, the log, and the square root transformation. Perfect. But what if we do with minus one? In minus one, we have the input that it is minus one, minus zero, and the transformation is a log. It's a square root, sorry. So it shows us the message validate. X cannot be negative for this transformation. And it does not and it does not do any else for the output. If we select the log, it says the same. If we set this, uh, if we set up to this transformation, to the square transformation, since this is not on this logical part, it will do it and it will continue with the with the transformation. Yeah, let's see what happens to zero. Zero. It shows minus infinity and it's square perfect. That's how we can do this like validate output with the validate function and a message. And it will stop all the other output from continuing. Okay, so here. Now, the next thing that we can uh, show our user are notifications. Uh, we can use show notification if there is no problem, but you want the user to know what's happening. So basically there are three. The author tells us or shows us three options. The first one is the transient one. It is a notification that automatically disappears after any amount of time. Uh, the next one is like the process, like the notification when the process starts and remove it when the process ends. And the third one is just to update a notification with progressive updates. So let's see here, first the transient notifications. And for this one, in here, we just have to call a single argument. That is the message that we want to express. And here we have three, three notifications, three different notifications. Okay, let's see how that looks. So here we have it on the user interface. We're just gonna have an action button that it says good night. And once in, a, in our server, once we have that input, once the user press that button, it's gonna show three notifications in here. So let's run it. So here we have our action button. And if we press it, we have, we should see the three notifications. Oh, the four notifications. And they will automatically be deleted. They will, by default, will disappear after five seconds, yeah, but we can change this with the duration parameter, or we can also dismiss it just by clicking on the X button on the notification. The next type of notifications are the removing on completion. So in here, what we do, is that we set the duration parameter equal to null and the close button equal to false. This is when we want to show a notification and we want to delete it only when the task completes. So setting this duration to null and this close button to false, it will stay visible until the task is completed. Uh, in here, we can we need to store the ID returned by the show notification function, 
and then pass this value to remove notification and on exit function. So let's see how does that look. Oh, okay, so this is an example, but we cannot run it since it will like try to read a CSV file from our computer. We have not seen the those kind of functions uh, until now. We will see it in next chapter. So basically that we're gonna do is that we're gonna save the ID from show notification. The notification will say, uh, reading data as specified before we have the duration equal to null and the close button equals to false and we're going to set the on exit function with the remove notification the id that we just show and after the csv is read you when we try to read the csv it will show us the notification and after it's completed, the notification will go automatically. Then the next type of notifications that we can show is the progressive updates. So in here we have multiple calls to show notification and it will show us multiple notifications or we can capture the ID from first call and use it in subsequent zip calls. So let's see how that looks. In here, we're gonna create just a table output on our user interface. And what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna create a server and uh, we're gonna create a notify value that is a function with the message and ID equals to null. And we're gonna create a show notification with the message, the ID, we're gonna store it here as ID with the duration equals to null and the close button equals to false. So it will be a part of this removing on completion. It will also remove on completion once we once the progress is done. So let's see here. In here, we're gonna create a reactive function with the ID. We're gonna call the notify function with the message reading data. And we're gonna select the ID that we already created here. And we have these four, these four ones. So basically what they are gonna do is that they are gonna pop up uh, one by one and when the process of the day of the table is completed they will disappear so let's see how that works so you can see here one two three four and we have our table so this is a way to like show the progress that you are doing for your application show the progress of some process that your application is doing. And these are some different ways that we can, that we can do it. Okay, this is it. This is all for the notification part. So now we're gonna move to the progress bars. In these progress bars, basically what we're gonna do is that we're gonna select like an interactive way of, sh of showing the user the progress of, of some function that we are doing or some process that we are doing. The author tells us that this is good for long running tasks and you need to be able to divide the big tasks that you are doing into a known number of small pieces. And well, they each should take roughly the same amount of time. So we'll start with Shiny with this one. So in this one, we're gonna use the with progress and the ink progress function. In here, let's see how that works. You are gonna create a UI with a numeric input. We're gonna ask the user how many steps 
for for the progress bar just to show an example and an action button that that just says go to start the progress bar and in here the server so we have the data and we're going to use the event reactive function so as soon as the user clicks on the input go that is, that is the action button with this we're going to use this one with progress and we're going to select a message computing random number and we're going to create this iterative function this is this iterative function what it does is that it's gonna like show a progress even though the function that we are doing it does not take any time to run but this is just an example to show how we can use the function so let's do it here So in here, it doesn't do anything until I hit the react the event reactive, the input go. So let's select 20. That is the number of steps that the progress bar will show. So let's do it in here. We have computing random number. It obviously does not take this amount of time, but this is just an example to see how it is done. We can change it to 10. And in here, it will go faster since, since it depends on the number of steps that we that we selected. And this is how we uh, do this progress bar with Shiny. In here, the next, <clears throat> the next option is the waiter. So with the waiter package, the author tells us that it uses our R6, an R6 object. Uh, it tells us that we don't look, we don't, we should not worry about the details just a lot. So let's see basically what it does. In here, what we're gonna do is from the library, we're gonna select the use waitress function. Let's see it in here. And on the server, what we're gonna do is the same as before. We're gonna create an event reactive that it depends on the input goal. We're gonna create a new progress bar in here with the waitress new. We're gonna select the maximum of the input steps just as we did before. And we're gonna select this on exit function. So it automatically closes when it's done. So let's see how that looks. So basically we have the same function as before. We have, let's select 20 steps. And as soon as we click go, we're gonna trigger that event reactive and it will show us the waiter function. As we can see here, this is just a bar on top that will, it will do 20 steps until it reaches until it reaches the end. And it will give us a random number, I think. Yes, a random uniform number. So basically this waitress is just an option to have the top, uh, to have the progress as a little bar on top. Of course, we can have, there is a lot of options that we can change. There is a lot of customization that we can do. We can, we can see all of those options on the, well, on the, here, on the, how do I say, on the, on the documentation of the function. But yes, there is a lot of ways that we can customize and everything. So the next one that we can have to show the user that something is being done, it, it is the spinners. This is just a little circle that, that it is like on the center of the application or something. So let's see how does it look. 
And here we have the same UI with the waiter and the use waiter function. And on the server, we have the same event reactive with the input, go input. And on the waiter, we're gonna create a new waiter and we're gonna say that is show. This is different from this one as this is waitress and this is waiter. So let's see how does it look. Okay, we have our application here and we are not doing anything. The application is not doing anything, but we, when we click go and we set up the event reactive, it will show us the little circle here. And this is, that is the spinner that we can use. That is how we can use that spinner. In this case, as well, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of well, a, a customization options. Let's see here. In here, we're gonna, in this user interface, what we're gonna do is that we don't want the, the spinner to occupy the whole application. So instead of doing that, we just want the spinner to occupy the plot, the plot output part of the application to show that it is loading the plot, only the plot. So in here, we're gonna create a plot. And let's see here, and the input and the server, in here, we're go we have the same event reactive that it depends on the input go. And in the waiter, the same as before, but we're gonna specify that the ID is equal to plot, the one that we created here for the plot output. So it is gonna to show only for the plot. Let's see how that looks. We're gonna create go, so it starts. And you can see that it only occupies the space of the plot that the plot will, will have. So it does not cover everything. Maybe we have a plot here and a table here, and we just want to show that the plot is loading. So we use this option and it's, it only is gonna show this part. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, sys, sys.sleep is the seconds that uh, the spinning takes. Sys.sleep uh, three. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> or if you could change it in your function, maybe to five and we see whether the duration of the spinning will be longer or something. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Let's try with uh, an exaggerated one. That's 15. So yes, I think it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the duration that it takes before. Okay, yeah. So I guess that is the scissor slip. This is the duration that it will take. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, as I was mentioning before, we have a lot of customizations. Let's see this one here. All the different spinners that we can have. Let's see all these, inf all these different waitress that we can have. Mm, looks nice. <laughs> yes, they do look nice. Let's see what else can we find. Let's see the spinners that we can have. Oh, they are mm. a lot. <laughs> a lot more. Can you put the link on the chats? Yeah. Sure. Let's see here. Here we have all the customization for the waitress and the spinners 
everything that we can show in the user interface. Wow. And the last part, it is the confirming and undoing. This is just to confirm that the user wants to do an action or if the action is already done, that uh, to have a way that we can undo it. This is for the author says that this is best for potentially dangerous actions like deleting things. So let's see how we can do it. Uh, the first one is explicit confirmation that will the author creates a dialogue box with model di dialogue. Not I was not familiar with that function, but basically uh, it creates a dialogue. This is the text that it will show. Uh, the title, and here we have it, the action button we have cancel and the ID and the action button, okay, the ID and what it shows, delete. And since this is the important one, we set it as button, button danger. So it has that red, that red color. So it's like, like, this is the way to create this pop-up uh, box dialog. So let's see here. We're gonna create a, a, a UI only with an action button that says if we want to delete all the files with the ID delete. And in here, what it basically do is that we're gonna observe the event delete, this, this action button. And in this part, it's going to show the model, but it's going to show this pop up box that we created here. And if it's okay, if the input says okay in here, so delete, it will show the notification files deleted. And it will remove model. I think it's just remove the the box that we created. And if the input is cancel, in here cancel, don't do anything. It's just gonna remove the model. So let's see how it works. Here we're gonna create the box. Here we're gonna create the user interface with an action button. And here we're gonna create the server. So we have here the action button. If we don't press it, nothing happens. But if we press it, it's gonna show the model. It's gonna show model. When we have the event input delete, it's gonna show model the one that we created here, model confirm. And we have two options, delete, that is input okay, and cancel, that is input cancel. So if we, if we press input delete or input okay, we should see a notification that says files deleted. So let's try it. Okay, and here it is. Here's the notification. And also it removes the model. So it removes this box. Now, if we select the input cancel, it just only removes the box. So that's all that it does. That's how we can create a confirmation, explicit confirmation, if the user wants to continue with a process or something like that. And for the undoing of an action, it is like waiting some time and the user does the action, confirms the action. And instead of just asking them if they wanna continue or they don't want to continue, what we do is that they do it and we give them the option to undo it. If maybe they don't want, they did it by mistake or something like that. Yeah, you can uh, suggest editing the word actually in the slide i'm sorry what was that uh in this yeah more likely waiting some time before actually or actually oh okay <laughs> yeah so yes we will need to do that. 
Okay, we will need to do it through GitHub. But okay, I think I can do it. So for this undoing, let's see, we're gonna create a user interface. That is a message. We're gonna create a text area input where we can write a message. And let's see. We're gonna have a placeholder stating what's happening before we, we write anything. And we have an action button that is to it. So basically the author gives us this code, but it says that it is a little more advanced that we that, that we like everything that we know up until now, we cannot do this or <laughs> we cannot understand it. We cannot <laughs> understand it yeah. until now. Mm. So it says that just let's run it to see how that it looks. Here, here we have the placeholder with the three rows. So let's see. Hello. We just want to tweet that. And here it's, we have a notification that it's gone already. <laughs> but as you can see on my console, it says actually sending tweet. So this is one way that we can specify some time. We can give the user some time so they can undo the tweet. And it is show the tweet retracted and nothing shows up in my console. So this is one way that I guess we're gonna see on later chapters, but it's one way that we can do it, that we can undo actions on our applications. Yeah, I think I normally see that in when sending email via Gmail. Yes, that yes, that's email, a good you example. You have some few seconds to undo or send it. It's been really saving me when I forget to attach <laughs> uh, attachment to the email. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a really good example. That's yeah. a really good example of how we can use this undo option instead of the confirmation because it will be really like, it will not be like as useful if every time you want to send an email, it asks you, do you really want to send that email? So instead of that, of asking you yeah. that, it gives us the undo option. Sure, sure. Mm. Okay, so that was everything for this chapter, eight chapter user feedback. Let me know if maybe do you have any comments, any questions? Yeah, I find it very important considering that uh, this is how best we can interact with the user and yeah, get to make some changes or confirm some actions which are crucial for running uh, uh, models. Yes, that's correct. And like all the customization, everything, we have a lot of options that we need, we will need to check <laughs> in order to make like our applications like uh, more beautiful. <laughs> sure. Mm. Okay, so let's just stop here.